What's up, you guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you some seriously advanced sentence structures, giving examples from one of the top TV shows on Netflix, Riverdale. If you want to become part of this English family, hit subscribe and follow all of my social media accounts listed in the description down below. With that shameless plaque out of the way, let's get into five grammar structures I learned from Riverdale. First up is to have somebody do something. This most commonly means to cause somebody to do something. You can either force them or pay or ask that person to do a certain kind of job. One of the restaurant owners you gave a bottle to is a friend of mine. I had my chemist compare your concoction to large rum. And while you've embellished the recipe I own with all those spices, the core remains the same. Next up is the perfect infinitive with to, which is formed with to have plus the ed form of a verb, as in to have lost, to have met, to have seen. Monroe, what the hell happened? Some guys jumped me while I was wearing a golf club at my knee. Yeah, I'm gonna call an ambulance. Did you see their faces? Oh man, they were wearing masks. We don't need to have seen their faces. We know exactly who they are. The perfect infinitive often refers to the things that might have happened in the past. She claims to have met a number of notable people, but I don't believe her. This is the same thing as saying she claims she has met a number of notable people. Or, as in the example from the show, we don't need to have seen their faces. We didn't see their faces, but we still know who those thugs or hooligans were. Number three, participle phrases. A present participle phrase begins with the ing form of a verb plus any object or modifier. As in, look at the panther climbing the tree or the water dripping from the table will damage the floor if it's not cleaned up. The aforementioned examples have present participle phrases that are essential. This means that they provide information that is necessary to understand the subject they modify. Bear in mind that these kind of essential phrases, they are never set off by commas. The ones that do use commas are called non-essential participle phrases. And they provide information that is not necessary for you to understand the context. As in Spencer playing video games neglected his homework. If you skipped playing video games, you would still be able to pick up on what is meant here. And what can you make of this phrase from Riverdale? Is it essential or non-essential? Comment down below, what's your take on this? Did this to prove he can and always will control me. And do you feel this control is him punishing you for something? Was King Lear's ego gossamer thin? Yes, this is what he does. He Number four, the one and only future perfect. We'll have noticed, we'll have arrived, we'll have graduated, we'll have finished. Well, whilst the rest of Riverdale sits down to give thanks, we'll be dumping Bedford's body in Sweetwater River just before it freezes over. By the time spring thaw comes around, the salmon will have gobbled up his eyes. Will have done has two meanings. Firstly, it's used to say that you expect an action to be completed by a time in the future. I'll have finished journaling by the time you arrive. And secondly, you can make suppositions about what happened. You have read about all kinds of debaucheries in books, no doubt. And the last point on our agenda is the third conditional sentence structure, or the past hypothetical conditional, which is simply used to imagine a different past from the one that happened. Your Uncle Frank is your classic ne'er-do-well. The straw that broke the camel's back was when your father took the blame for Frank's DUI. What? Well, you're saying the DUI on Dad's record wasn't his fault? Well, according to the official police report, it was. But your father wasn't behind the wheel that night. After Frank went on a bender, he crashed our car into a telephone pole in Sycamore. It was the third strike against him, so he would have done jail time. So your father covered for him. Here, one of Archie's mom's lines was supposed to be, if it hadn't been for your father, your uncle would have done jail time. Which means, thanks to your father, your uncle wasn't caught and sent to serve a jail sentence. And there you have it, five grammar structures you can learn from an American TV show, Riverdale. Who would have thought that could be possible, like learning whilst watching detective stories on Netflix? Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling now. See you later. Bye-bye.